Building public is a marketing approach where entrepreneurs transparently share their behind the scenes wins, struggles, and learnings as they create and sell a product online. By doing so, they can get early supporters and customers for their startup. Now, Fab Giovanetti, founder of Alt Marketing School, takes this approach to her company's content strategy. Today, she shares how Alt Marketing School team creates content and courses in public. In episode 53 of Marketing Pop Show, you learn first of all, Fab's building public content strategy. Second, common mistakes when creating content in public. Third, how to create space for marketers to thrive. And number four, a career pop that's accelerated Fab's career. Before you get started, I created a free power up cheat sheet that you can download and apply Fab's build in public content strategy to your business right away. Get it now at marketingpowerups.com or find that link in the show notes and description. Ready? Let's go. Marketing Power Ups. Ready? Go! Here's your host. Rebelly Fab, it's so good to have you here. Super excited uh, to, to chat with you about education focus uh, content, specifically courses. I know I'm a big advocate of education focused content strategy and free to pay or paid courses is one way to do that. I'd love to hear you. You wanted to chat about this strategy that you approach around building courses in public. How did that come about? Like, is it just like, oh, you know, the whole building public is so it's kind of stuck out more in the last couple of years, especially in the startup scene. But like, how did it start for you when you started building courses in public? Did you just come up with the idea or do you saw somebody else do it? Or you just drew inspiration from the indie hacker scene with this build in public movement? Good question. I am forever going to give credit where credit is due. <laughs> and a shout out to my friend, Kevon, my little buddy, the broccoli on, guys, right. everybody will know him yeah. as. Yeah. So um, Kevon, I met him as I was developing the certification that we run at the school, mm. or marketing school, this is my school. Um, and he was also, you know, developing one of his courses there. And so we kind of just became friends, uh, we became buddies. The broccoli and the avocado person, that's very interesting, talking about yeah. food again. Anyway, and um, he talked about building in public. And I kind of seen it before, but he talked about it. I was a big part of some of the things he teaches. And that obviously got me interested in the whole concept. And then you will see people online that are like very much against this, people online that are very much for it. And I naturally was inclined to, in some ways, build in public some things, but I didn't make it as much of a practice for me. Right. Uh, for my Just for context, my previous business was a community, an online community of wellness entrepreneurs. There was some training within there as well, I guess forever this destined to be a teacher anyway um and i found that it's, it can be hard when i talk to other course developers teachers you know creators whoever you are as you're teaching a course there's always that um you know that slippery slope of how much should i share about what's inside my course what my course yeah. is like what my content is should i gatekeep i'm gonna do gatekeep <laughs> or should i give it oh you know should share everything and outline it all you know publicly and there's two people that come to mind to me that both said well neil patel said in one video that sadly now you might have to go and find i'm giving you too many references here already <laughs> ramley's like no anyway no, i'll find uh, it neil no patel worries. yeah it's a great video and it's all about um you know giving away your best content for free and it was like a short video clip with somebody asking him a question and you're just kind of saying you know think about you know, for the SEO strategy, it was really interesting to be like, give away literally the content from your program. You were saying to somebody, the first module, just repurpose, repackage it as a blog post and just share it all because people want mm. your accountability and support. So that stuck right. with me. And then the other person I want to mention is Dickie Bush. Similarly, Dickie Bush yeah, uh, also inspired under, uh, me. For 30. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think for the big program they have, he, I read in one of his tweets, it was explaining how actually Either they created an ebook again, don't quote me on this, I saw a tweet ages ago. Um, or maybe they created a guide or whatever. They literally broke down the whole journey of the course. And it was I like, instead of just saying, we're not gonna tell people what what it is inside and what they can expect, just to kind of, you know, be afraid of actually sharing that piece, we're gonna tell them so they know exactly what to expect. And I think setting clear expectations is so important and building an educational Mm. Uh, training or product in public helps you also doing that setting expectations you know that makes sense i love how you, you know for kevin Ke kevin chung he's like public lab.co when i linked that in the show notes and description you talked about 
um, Neil Patel with the free, uh, giving away free stuff. I, I really love that approach because it's a great way to build trust. You know, when you're not, you're like sharing new and uh, very novel and helpful content uh, instead of like sharing, like giving only half the recipe. <laughs> we were talking about food before, you know, instead of giving half the recipe and like I'll pay for the rest of the half, which feels it doesn't feel good you know when you only give a piece of the recipe when you share your recipe they're more likely to come and actually come to your restaurant and buy your food is 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 the approach you're thinking about here that seems to work exactly and you know when it comes to the system piece which we can definitely go deeper into as well one of my problems wasn't even the fact that i wouldn't want to share is that uh, squirrel brain and memory i do so many things obviously pretty much very lean and lean and kind instead of lean and mean as in, I, you know, the things well on my own, aside from Steph, always shout out to Steph because she does all of our content production for videos. Um, but it's mainly me. So I needed to actually find a way to remind myself, what are we actually changing? What are mm. we actually adding? Whether it's our student community or our certification, these are the big products that we have. And the certification is eight weeks and it takes me at least six weeks, usually to revamp or shift or kind of, you know, go through all the different things we need to change. Um, it depends on iteration. Some iterations is less, but it takes me a long time. And even if it's small things, I realized actually they have a huge impact. Like we, I can break down the system itself, how I do it, but looking at the feedback, I see something that can be done better. I do it. And obviously then I won't forget about it because yeah. it's going to take me half an hour. And I actually started recording it. and by recording it, I started looking at it. And by looking at it, I started asking myself, why am I doing this? And how is it going to make the experience better? So mm -hmm. it's good for myself. And then I was like, why am I not sharing it with the world? Why am I not sharing like this is the behind the scenes, not just like of me doing something, but explaining the rationale behind it. And I was going to be beneficial for my students. Mm -hmm. So that system has helped me keeping things in my head, getting them out of my head and create relevant content as well. I love how you're positioning it also as a benefit to the course creator or, or the, co the content creator. Like you're refining your thought process and your ideas through through this process so that when it comes time to to teach it or to create content for the course itself you've already kind of gotten feedback there's all uh, this feedback loop around this which is super cool can you talk a little bit more about like the the process of building a course in public like w let's say you know maybe maybe walk us walk us through walk me through like what you've done maybe like you have this concept and then you teach a little bit on it, like on LinkedIn. Like how, I'm curious how it works building a course in public. I'm going to give you the example that is probably most actionable, which is the one for our on-demand classes. Just because, again, the certification, as I said, it's such a unique piece. It's a living mm. and breathing organism that literally take yeah. over my life, which I love, absolutely love. But for example, the release notes has been a big thing, a big system for me for that because it's such a huge project. But we do have also um, master classes in marketing labs, that's what we call them. But basically, they are short contained training. And whether I do, I'm going to tell you the example. I'm literally going to give you the example of the breakdown of me doing it with a, a teacher. I'm thinking about one that is coming up actually about kind of understanding automation through AI for marketers, which is super exciting. And it was also yeah. a very interesting topic. Obviously, we do everything. I just want to say marketing to hearts and making marketing better and more human. So, yeah, we really want to give a specific angle to this to kind of talk about some of the fears of, you know, marketers around AI, for example. So when I approached my amazing teacher, which I'm not going to mention yet, you got to wait and see it out. And I talked to them and I was like, okay, let's do this. And so basically the first process has been together, just to give an idea, you can do it on your own, obviously, understanding the core questions that we can ask. As you would know, as an onboarding and product person, when you ask a question to your audience, yeah. You have to take some of the answers with a pinch of salt. We do um, kind of multiple choices and we try to use it more to actually refine some of the angles that we're going to take. You know, we already know historically when, when I chat with somebody that is a need that our audience has expressed. So sorry, I need to go one step back. I also look at what our audience tells us. Um, I think you do something similar as well. So if, if your listeners and, and viewers remember like, you know, when somebody is in your newsletter, the first emails you send, we do the same. We say, well, how can I help you? Or if I were mm. to answer your question in the next newsletter, what would that be? So we get, gather that data. And since we are a training-driven company, it's called Old Marketing School. That's the first step. We look at topics that come back again and again. So AI kept coming back. So that's the 
a pre-work step, then in this case we approach a teacher because it's not my expertise. So I like to bring some guest teachers in when mm, it's when it makes smart. sense. And then also co-creation, yay. Uh an amplification, yay. And then and then we start and then we start defining these questions that we're gonna answer. Usually it's up to three. And right. both us and the teacher, so that we combine our audiences, ask our audiences the questions. As you see the analytical side of my brain. I mean, good luck anybody trying to follow my brain on a good day. <laughs> I like it, yeah. <laughs> but I'm trying to break it down, so hopefully it can help you guys. Um, but basically then we ask these questions, both of us obviously one question per micro survey. Most times we do on social, sometimes we'll put in the newsletter on our side, but you know, just one question at a time, see the answers, see what we learn from that, and that's the second step. And then again, it's a bit of that, that building in public together. And then what we like to do then is throughout the different steps of the journey, obviously there is going to be the refinement of the curriculum. We do things from our training standpoint. So I'm going to humbly say the quality is really high. So mm. first of all, we have to you know define the structure and then we define the slides and all these things. And in different stages as well, we I like to go to a platform that you think you are, you have a quite strong and active audience and ask them questions because you never know when an answer will come around that topic. So in a way, I start building almost like a very natural content calendar for myself, or at least once a week, I would approach the topic that we're working on from a course perspective and ask questions to help us guide what we're working on. Most courses, you're probably going to work on the content of the course, you know, yeah. um, you can even go as far as, you know, doing it before that by understanding the type of delivery, you know, is it going to be a sync? Is it going to be a cohort? Is it going to be something else? That is totally fine. I don't have to do that right now because we know exactly our business model eventually, but that's something that if you're new or if you feel a bit overwhelmed, take also the time to understand the delivery and the expectation of your students, because what works for me and our students might not work for the people that you are targeting. They might not have time actually to do self-paced because I like, I think I want to, but then I don't. <laughs> they might instead be more motivated by self-paced because they like to do things, you know, on a weekend, they really like to upskill. So that's something that you want to learn as well. We got that. So now for me, building in public is a lot about the content, the flow, and also the main takeaway. I like to give something actionable. So that's another thing that we really test. I hope I'm not rambling. I hope I gave some practical things, but you can actually help me unpack it. So, yeah, no, this is very helpful. I think this, yeah, I love how you're approaching it, figuring out exactly testing, testing, you know, the format. Yeah, it is converse. It's literally trying to have a conversation. Is the hardest thing as a marketer, as we all know, as marketers, if you are a marketer, at least everyone watching, to do. But once you start, then it becomes quite easy because your audience get used to the question, get used to answer, and they mm. see another thing I want to say, sorry, the Notion approach, I call it, because Notion does it really well. Okay. Yeah. You know, hey, we love Notion. And if <laughs> you remember, because that's another thing important to say, when you're building in public, you're not only building your stuff, you're also talking about it, and you also have to remember all these things. So systems are crucial. But a little thing that you can do, like the Notion approach, is then if somebody gives you a great recommendation, and you remember that they suggested, you know, a different way to do things or a specific way to do things is nice to actually give them a shout out or just get back to them and be like by the way thank you so much for mm. actually taking the time to answer this and say i prefer to have again a cohort course instead of a async course because you helped us shape this this is the link by the way this is what we're building now right you know first of all it creates content it creates conversation and these are the little nuggets that you can do around the bigger educational breakdown of your content and having this little nuggets of asking questions, getting them and then rewarding or seeing your audience, as I call mm. it, to tell them, thank you. I see this and you're helping so me shape powerful. this. Yeah. You know? That is so powerful. I think that's a great way to just acknowledging people's contribution makes them feel good that you're listening and when it comes time to release that course or that content, they're more likely to engage with it and share it to people. I think that feedback loop is super important because they, they feel like they've been part of the creation process, that they have a little bit of ownership to to share it or to sign up for the course once it's out, essentially. Is that what you're seeing? When you know people that you've gotten feedback from, they're more likely to engage and even sign up uh, one of the earliest 
uh, students to that particular course uh, to consume that content? I've seen that a lot from, um, again, I learned a lot, I should say, from a product based kind of marketing perspective, which is something that I usually would not even go near because it's, it's never been my, with love, it's never been my my niche or it's never been the people that we've been serving or the type of marketing that I've been doing historically. So I started looking into it, people like yourself and other people as well, just found it really interesting. And I was like, can we take this approach? Because actually psychology is psychology. Humans are humans. That's the whole thing about our school yeah. anyway. And see how to apply it to courses as well. And the trainings is our, basically is our niche. And I found that, as you said, it does build that confidence, that loop. And once again, I say that marketing to me, I'm going to say to me, my personal experience, marketing for me is not about persuasion, it's about direction. Mm. And actually by creating personal touch points, by sharing the journey, by sharing whether it's parts of the curriculum, whether it's how things are shaping up, I'm making my audience part of that journey. And then if they have this pain point that I'm painting for them, the little reminders and nudges, these little interactions that I'm having with them, help them if they are ready and if this is the right direction for them, then to commit, as you say, because I'm building trust. So the long-winded answer is this. The short answer is yes, I'm seeing the difference. I'm, I'm recognizing That's basically good. some of the people that sign up. And it kind yeah. of is that validation of, is building a small relationship, a micro relationship that builds enough trust to commit to give it a try, mm. which to me is huge. I love something you said there. Marketing is not about persu- persuasion, it's about direction. I love it because it rhymes, but it's just like a, not and just that, but it, are cute. <laughs> but it actually has a deep meaning to it because people think, uh, you know, like ABC, always be closing. And that's not mm-hmm. what you're talking about here. You're talking about like leading and guiding and pointing and directing. It's such a more powerful trust building experience that. It turn instead of just a one time sale, it turns into a potentially a lifelong because there's a relationship building approach to this. I love that you mentioned that. Thank you for sharing that because that's again at the core of the values that we have as a school, how we want to teach marketing, but also we have some marketers, some students. I just want to make a point here. They come to us and they either actually have a sales background, which is really interesting, especially from a certification standpoint. Or maybe they still think the marketing is sale. Obviously, ROI, as you say, always be closing, as you say, like, you know, we say, like, <laughs> getting results, right? All these things. Right. And um, when I talked to them, then I realized that actually a lot of the time that mindset holds some people back from actually going all in marketing or sharing their journey or maybe again building in public because of that misconception of constantly trying to persuade your audience and i understand that for some people that's what marketing is and i'm like cool there's also a book called persuasion so fine that's right. just not obviously who i am and i want to show up because the people that i want to attract are the ones that are like i want to do everything i can to make people understand this is the problem that i'm trying to solve and this is why i can help you with that but there's also a lot of humbleness in my opinion in saying this person doesn't need me to solve that problem mm-hmm. for them because that problem is yeah. not strong it's not the right time and that is okay. And it can be hard, especially for our egos as marketers. We don't talk about it enough because we feel so much pressure to be salesmen as well as creative, as well as analytical. Right. God, we wear so many hats, like your beautiful hat, but we wear a lot more than that, you know? And we don't so talk good. about it enough. That's my rant. No, it's so good. I think that's uh, so important uh, for you. To, you said something there also that I think I need to re- people need to really hone in on is that some good marketers, they just don't tell what who is the best fit. They also should signify who might not fit, who might not be, who might be the worst fit, who are not good ideal people and be willing to say no to them because I think uh, it's all about long term. I think if if you say yes to them and then they're like not happy because it's not what they expected, uh, that could turn into um, but bad publicity or bad review. And I, I really love how you're being honest upfront rather than you know the traditional you know direct response like you know just get get their money and leave, <laughs> get their money and run kind of thing. Where uh, it's important to to be ethical about our approach to. It's really good. To be honest, that's, that's one of those things where people ask you, why, why are you still feeling so strongly about this? Because I literally built a company on it. So if I didn't mm. at least upstand by that as myself and as how I right. want to teach marketing and do marketing, that's what I do. And I know that everybody's different, but I feel that that makes me feel a lot more confident to go to the people that I know I can help and be like, we can help. Because I mm. know that I understand, as you say, and I love that you mentioned that. 
that there are some people that are not the right fit and mm. it's okay for you to step back and be like, one of the things that somebody said, sorry, just want to note, um, that's really powerful on this point is, so your network is really important and I'm sure I'm mm. going to mention that in another question yeah. later. But that's the other thing. Is, but let's take the example of um, on a consulting level. I know we're talking about course creators, but maybe you also right. offer coaching or consulting. A lot of people do, right? Even if it's a course, but let's say in this case, a one-to-one, -one, it might be that you're not the best person for them, but you know somebody exactly that can cover that topic or that specific expertise. And I think there's a lot of power in being like, this is not the right fit for you, but I know somebody that can support you because right. then it might come a time when that person is like, I cannot help you, but this person, my friend, it's an amazing course that can help you instead. It also builds a lot of trust knowing when it's time to let go and potentially bring people somewhere else because you know that you cannot fit that need. That's, again, my personal opinion, and I've seen that for me. I paid tenfold. So, you know. I love that piece that you're talking about networking. Yeah, refer them to people who are in the same network as you. Uh, we're going to get that into that a little bit. I know there's a question about career power-ups. <laughs> might be like teeing that up. Exactly. I, I want to kind of close the loop here around this building courses in public. You're talking about getting feedback early, getting pulling people in who are interested, um, getting their thoughts, and I guess showing them early, I guess, minimum viable course. What would you call that? Like the, the I guess you're starting to show them pieces of the courses, the course, and like really like using that feedback to to improve the course. Is that is that the core of this the strategy, the approach that you, you have been, uh, you know, in really implementing to make sure to build content that's really top notch is what I'm hearing. Yes. And one no, more note I want to make on that excellent point. Yes. And if you want to also do it, not just from a content standpoint, which again can be, a, I'll give you some examples, but we talked also about just educational content tied to the content of your courses. One thing that, so growth design does really well, shout out to growth design, the guys mm, at growth yeah. design, is obviously they also have the tools and they know how to create beautiful bespoke experiences that I would not be able to build. But then what they did for the latest course, again, shout out, um, they did, uh, I think they offered you uh, a module of the course for you to actually access. And I was like, we can't really do that. But it inspired me because I was like, it would be good for people to understand a bit what the feel is like. Right. And again, humble. But um, I know that my energy is literally what every single testimonial says. The content is great, but obviously my energy makes it makes a difference. Mm. Again, humble. Um, because I bring the fun that I want people to experience when it comes to learning marketing, right? So I was like, what is the best? I tried lots of things. Obviously, you have to try. It. And I found that the one that works the best as the bottom funnel, that kind of, you know, that kind of con consideration conversion stage, what works the most is when people get to have an experience with me where I do a taster class that even if it's not, you know, sometimes you cannot do exactly the same. So for me, for example, we don't do like in Zoom, like we would do with people's spaces. It's more webinar style. But I make a short 30-minute class, super impactful, super actionable, no fluff, very interactive, and I give people exactly the experience they're going to get during the cohort. And that has been the highest converting thing. I was talking mm. to Kevon, funnily enough, and, and he was yeah. like, you've done six in 10 days. I was like, I know. <laughs> then it was a lot, but that was because of um, a couple of things falling in different ways, but it actually proved to be beneficial. So it was like, I'd rather do, it's about three classes that I rotate. I'd rather do those and they work really well and drive people there for that, you know, conversion consideration stage, than do things that are actually not going to work because I think that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. So you have to try and test, but the closer of an experience of what the course is actually going to feel like you can give to your audience, whatever your course is going to be like, that is a great way to combine all of this building in public more publicly and then taking people in private. Get them a feel, give them something tangible and don't make it overwhelming because if you give them too much, right. it's going to be hard for them then to be wanting to join you for the next step because they feel either they got enough or they didn't get to actually action what you told them. Right. So that's just to finish off and to give you an idea of then how I will progress into the next step as well. I love that. It's like really about, you know, pulling them into a, a deeper, we're talking, we've been talking about relationship, but like it's a, a deeper relationship. You know, there's people who are getting feedback. There's people who are, inter you, you're interacting with on, on social media, but like this is now like them getting uh, almost uh, a, a closer, tight knit, uh, intimate session uh, within this. I love that. 
Well, thank you for sharing that. I do appreciate it. I want to sh- switch gears now. You've already been kind of cluing into it. You've been in marketing now for uh, you know over uh, you know some time with some stints as a freelance jour- journalist. Your uh, chief marketing officer and now your CEO of Alt Marketing School. I'm curious, what's a power up that's helped you in your career? Something that has given you a leg up compared to to others. I mentioned it earlier, so let's see if listeners who pick that up who's like will be attentive and then get distracted by the food earlier. They're just okay. thinking about lunch today. That would yeah. be amazing. Uh, but I mentioned network and I mentioned the power of the network, obviously within the referrals and you know referring other people. So I'm gonna go back to that. It is okay. Let's let's do a caveat and a remind there. It is actually a practice to keep up with your network. Mm. Why? Because it's hard for you not to go to your network only when you need them. That's the other problem. So it's actually a practice to catch up with your people, celebrate them, ask them if you can help them. We tend to naturally be like, you start building a network, you start talking to creators and people, you know, you're asked somebody like, Ramli, I asked you on email, be like, hey, we should be friends, let's talk, maybe we can do podcast. You know, sometimes it's just things like this, but then it's about how do you cultivate that beyond that one conversation. And I found that for me, what's been really helpful in you know, in my 15 years of experience, having spanned across four different industries since, has been you know trying to make a practice and an effort as you can get. I like systems. That's why we teach systems mm. in the school. I guess I'm having a system for me to you know know who are the people in my network that I want to cultivate because I like them, because I can help them, because they can help us, because values align, and make it a practice for me to help. I mean, notion mainly to help me remind myself. Should I check in on them? Or have we got something for them? And my network has been what's helped me so much. It helped me with opportunities. One of our clients from the agency side, again, we do run some campaigns as in actually hands-on campaigns. She is, just to give you the context of what I'm saying, she was uh, somebody that I work with when she worked at Whole Foods in my old company six years ago. She remembered me and she was like, oh, I saw you were doing an event about email marketing can you audit our email systems? We need somebody that can redo it all together. And I was like, this is a project that we could do. Let's talk. Completely random. I showed up. I talked about something that she needed help with. She knew me. She trusted me. She was like, you are the person for the job if you have the capacity to do it. Mm. So your network is so important. And it all starts with, again, potentially messaging somebody or emailing somebody and be like, hi, I like what you do. Can we do something together? Right. And then cultivating that. You know, that's been... Honestly, the biggest power up for me and sometimes I have to slap myself because I'm like, I haven't been doing it enough because it is a practice. So that's my, you know, my reminder, it is a practice and it takes time So build a simple system that helps you with that. And when you do it, you'll see a lot of benefits from it. What is your, I'm totally with you here. It's been a big leg up to me too. Like sometimes like touching base with a few folks that you really resonate with like once a month or once a quarter and like just hearing how life is going and like what are they up to what is their new project what is the their their new uh excitement that they have in their life you mentioned about systems there i'm curious how you approach that do you have like reminders in your calendar or like do you like how do you approach that cultivating? Because I find that's hard sometimes. Sometimes I'm like, oh, it's been almost a year since I chatted with this person. I should have, <laughs> I should have said a, a reminder to myself. But I'm always learning as to like maybe that you have uh, something in place to help you make sure to continue building that relationship. Excellent question. And I'm gonna be here. I feel like I'm in a in a meeting and I'm like, I have a confession to make. I have a problem. <laughs> I have an obsession and that obsession is with Notion. Shout out to Notion mm, again. Notion. Um, right. So yeah. we build lots of systems, yeah, for our students. We also have them in our template shop. So I build lots of systems, which actually is a great way for me to learn how to do better systems for myself. So one of the ones that I hacked in the last couple of months better, because before it was just a spreadsheet with names of people in a spreadsheet. Yeah. Then now that we moved everything into Notion, because we created a lot of systems for our students that I'm also using myself, that's the thing. Mm. One that I want to share at some point as well with others, but for now it's just internal because it's a bit of a mess, but it's the seed of a system that has obviously names, either emails or just reminders of where people ask that I know how to contact them, the preferred contact method. Some people literally just talk on Instagram. And then I like to automate some of those reminders. I like to automate some of those prompts. And I also like to um, categorize people. I don't want to say rank because it's not about rankings, it's about categorize people based yeah. on 
uh, kind of what we do together, how we work together with some people. I just talk every week or every two weeks because actually we know that we keep each other accountable and it's also a bit of a powwow or like a little bit of a of a kind of support system and not just checking in. So I have different categories and different groups, like all stacked in Notion, the little nice. names, way to contact them. And then automatically I get these reminders um, that help me kind of follow up. And a little tip, if you want to do this, but a bit less for like personal kind of connections and a bit more structured, you can even go as far as then hook it up with Zapier or anything else like that. And you could even do, that's my suggestion though, drafts, not sending emails, but you can also have drafts so cool. created. That's what I do all the time. Ramni, how do you think you get emails when the podcast comes out? <laughs> right. <laughs> I have so a draft and then it's personalized yeah. with all the different inputs. So for our podcast guests, just to give you a real life example, I would do that. I would do this. So when our podcast with you comes out, because you're a guest in ours too, um, I click a little checkbox and then it creates a draft for me with all the info. I go in. That's why I like a draft. I personalize it. I take things out. I refine them. And then when I'm ready, I send it. But it takes me two minutes instead of having to find the template, find the link, find the assets. It's only one place. Click, make a draft and happy days. So you could use that for some more structured um, networking that could also help. That is so good. I feel like uh, you can share, sell this 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 uh, um, template. Uh, be super cool. Oh, for... it will be. <laughs> <laughs> it so will be one see. day because it's That's a so lot good. of work, but it's worth it. If you enjoyed this episode, you'd love the Marketing Power Ups newsletter. I share the actionable takeaways and break down the frameworks of world class marketers. You can go to marketingpowerups.com to subscribe, and you'll instantly unlock the three best frameworks that top marketers use hit their KPIs consistently and wow their colleagues. I want to say thank you to you for listening and please like and follow Marketing Power Ups on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. If you feel like extra generous, kind of leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Leave a comment on YouTube. It goes a long way in others finding out about Marketing Power Ups. Thanks to Mary Sullivan for creating the artwork and design and thank you to Faisal Kaigo for editing the intro video. And of course, thank you for listening. That's all for now. Have a powered update. Marketing power ups. Until the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>